Now listen to this, you don't have to be a genius or a visionary or even a college graduate to become successful in business. You just need a framework and a dream. In the contrary, Malcolm X says that education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. I agree with him. But I also know that Bill Gates was a college dropout, but he and his childhood friend, Paul Allen, founded the biggest and one of the most valuable software company in the world. The company is called Microsoft. Welcome to the boardroom. Moses Ihenacho is my name. I'm the CEO of Most Strategic Alliance USA LLC. Today, I'll be telling you the stories of how Microsoft started, their strategies, their challenges, and what you can learn from them. In 1975, a 22-year-old computer programmer, Paul Allen, he got his hand on a popular electronics magazine. The cover featured an image of the world's first mini computer kit to rival commercial models. The magazine's cover inspired Allen, gave him an idea, and with a copy of the magazine in his hand, Allen visited his friend, Bill Gates. And after discussing the ideas, Allen predicted that this idea would drive down the cost of microcomputers to the point that developing commercial software for these machines would be a viable and profitable business. And so they started in earnest. In 1976, they formally incorporated Microsoft in the state of New Mexico in USA. And today, the rest is history. Now, how did Microsoft become so successful? What is the magic? Somebody say, partnership. I'm talking to you watching this video. Say after me, partnership. Yeah, I can hear you. Talking about partnership, Bill Gates and Paul Allen formed Microsoft. William Prota and James Gamble formed Prota and Gamble, otherwise known as P&G. Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard formed Hewlett Packard, otherwise known as HP. These are just a few long-standing business partnership that have redefined America's business landscape. Now, let me drive it back home. A lot of African businesses don't explore partnership. And that has to change. It has to change because great companies go into one form of strategic alliance or the other in order to succeed. If you are scared of partnership, then this information is for you. The biggest breakthrough of Microsoft was in 1980 when a partnership was formed with IBM. This partnership gave Microsoft the opportunity to provide crucial operating system. This meant that for every IBM computer sold, a royalty was paid to Microsoft. What does partnership offers? Do you want to know? Partnership offers you new markets, new perspectives, more opportunities, moral support, and ultimately, more money. Partnership might just be the answer if your market is too small. At that instance, you may need to consider partnership for a wider business opportunities and when you change or diversify your business automatically your target market changes so as a business owner you need to watch out for the right strategy to build up your business Microsoft before 1990 was predominantly a supplier to the hardware manufacturers 
that was their target market but as technology advanced and personal computers become so popular the bulk of microsoft revenue was generated through sales to consumers it was the first software company to reach one billion dollars in revenue that's no joke as more and more versions of microsoft windows were launched microsoft captured a higher market share now let's talk about the strategies microsoft also uses acquisition strategy to stay on top this means buying most of other companies shares to gain the control of that company for instance microsoft acquired skype in 2011 for 8.5 billion dollars this was the largest acquisition in microsoft history they acquired skype to compete with apple facetime and even google's voice microsoft's success knows no bounds but in all of this one would wonder if there are no setbacks in their operations of course there are microsoft had an undeserved reputation as a boring company that makes boring products they suffered it but they journeyed from that reputation to a global corporate software giant that's the spirit never allow setbacks to crush your spirit setbacks become opportunities to those with the right mindset and perception i tell you one thing with all the challenges all the adversaries only once in 15 years did microsoft products fail to win more than 50 percent of their reviews microsoft ranks second among software and computer service companies worldwide in terms of R&D spent behind Google parent company Alphabet that is product development strategy the first track Microsoft uses is called market penetration strategy market penetration strategy is their primary strategy which means selling more products to the market where the company currently has operations to continually penetrate the market microsoft has 116 stores worldwide they still sell online and even through authorized distributors the second strategy is product development this is their secondary strategy it simply means that microsoft continually develops new software products to generate higher revenues in 2021 microsoft research and development expenditure amounted to about 20.7 billion dollars the third strategy is market development this is a supporting strategy which means that they sell their computer software products outside the united states they are everywhere for example HoloLens was initially made available only in 10 countries such as US, UK, Canada, Australia, and Germany. But once demand for the product increased in the global scale, the company made HoloLens available to additional 29 markets with comparably lesser purchasing power, such as Croatia, Poland, and Turkey. The fourth strategy is diversification. An example of Microsoft business diversification is when it acquired Nokia's devices and services division to re-enter the smartphone hardware market. That strategy is called diversification. Those are the four major strategies Microsoft uses to stay on top of their game. So as an entrepreneur, you might want to look into those strategies to scale up your own business. Look for what fits you. Look for what fits your business and then tap into it. Now, let me go back to partnership. One thing you must put at the back of your mind is that in today's networked economy, no company can remain an island.
you can't achieve most of this all by yourself so you might want to start thinking about that partnership merger and acquisition in order to stand tall in the marketplace i will leave you today with a quote by henry ford he says coming together is beginning staying together is progress and working together is success thank you for watching tuesdays are better days for the boardroom so keep a date with me please share the video with someone who loves entrepreneurship and subscribe to my youtube channel so you can be getting my weekly videos please don't forget to hit the like button bye for now the boardroom where ideas come through the boardroom power your ideas